Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with episode 2 of the October Game of the Month series. Today we're going to continue working on Detective Dave that we actually started in September but unfortunately couldn't finish. Um, so what I'll do is a quick review of what we started and kind of went over last time and then we're actually going to jump in and start doing some, um, a few different things. Um, a little bit of artwork and working with the Unity GUI this in this video and then we'll jump back and do some more code. Uh, hopefully I can try to change up the video so it's not so it's just not code after code after code um, but uh, w without further ado I guess we'll go ahead and get started and uh, in model develop I have uh, the four scripts that we have right now that are that we've created so far for the October game of the month we have our evidence script uh, our evidence class which basically just stores what an evidence type is what it is uh, and then we have a suspect class which basically handles uh, what a suspect is, right? We have a type of suspect, we have a name, a biography, an age, a gender, and a type. Uh, and then we have our main menu GUI, which um, basically is the start of, you know, when you click new game, we're going to go ahead and generate a new case. We delete all the save files, and then uh, we jump right into the game. Uh, and then that brings us to the bulk of our code so far, which is a case generation script. Uh, at first, the first thing we did in the last video is we we kind of went through and we slowly, or we worked not slowly, but we worked on refactoring the code and uh, creating it so that we could use it multiple times instead of just once. Uh, and we created two key witnesses. So we have a robber now. We have the two key witnesses that are in the case, and now we're going to have to be working on generating uh, more suspects and then the evidence itself. So. Uh, Instead of doing a whole bunch of code today, we are going to be doing some code, so don't worry uh, if you were worried about that. But uh, we're going to do some GUI stuff because I think that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Uh, so I'm going to actually jump back into Unity and uh, kind of just go over where we were last time with our, uh, I guess, our scene. Here we have our main menu, right? And uh, the main menu is just three buttons. We're using the new Unity 4.6 GUI system here, uh, which is a canvas. It's called a main menu, which is our canvas over here. Uh, there's only three buttons attached to it. There's not much to them. And when you click New Game, that's when we go ahead and create our new case. So what I want to do is uh, when we hit New Game and we create our case, we want to go ahead and switch scenes into our very first scene, which is where you receive, where Detective Dave receives the case file. Uh, and I, I've created a case file. It's not the prettiest thing. Uh, you can kind of see it down here. Um, I created it in Inkscape, which is like a free vector drawing program. Um, so I suggest you guys all try to do it and uh, kind of create something for yourself. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn this into, oh, it looks like it's actually already been turned into a sprite, which is good. Uh, yep, okay. Let's see, so we actually have this case file here. Um, so what we want to do first is go ahead and create a new scene. And by the way, this case file, uh, Will picture will actually be on the uh, Dropbox for you guys to download if you want it. Uh, otherwise, you know, I suggest you guys try creating your own. Again, Inkscape is a free vector drawing program. It's it's pretty easy and can be fun to create your own artwork. Um, I'm not the best artist, obviously, but I try. <laughs> I try my best. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and create a new scene. So go up to File and hit New Scene. It creates a blank scene for us. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save uh, scene, and I'm gonna save it as. Uh, just I'd say case scene case file scene okay here you can go ahead and see it in the project folder I'm gonna drag and drop it up to our scene folder I'm gonna control s to save the whole project and uh, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new GUI so what we want to do is create go up to game object go to UI and uh, go ahead and click uh, let's say canvas here so this creates a new canvas system which is basically set up right now as a screen space overlay and what I'll do is I'm actually going to go ahead and, and dra uh, drag this game tag, or the, this tab here. And I'm going to drag it up to where it says scene and console. Uh, and this is going to allow us, basically, uh, I'm going to drag them all up here. So we have one giant screen, right? So now our game scene looks like this. When I go to the console or a scene, scene, <laughs> or the scene screen, you can kind of see the whole canvas here. This big white outline is our working area where we're going to work on our uh, scene. So what we want to do is now we want to add an image to our canvas, right? Actually, we'll go ahead and rename our canvas. We're going to call this case file uh, canvas, I guess. So it's a little more descriptive. Um, 
If you're worried about what Event System does, uh, Event System handles the inputs. Uh, I haven't messed with too much like going in depth with the Event System. I'm sure there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, but the Event System handles uh, buttons and like navigation and stuff. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that for now. So on our case file canvas, I have it highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and go up to Game Object and UI. I'm going to add another image. And uh, you see it here. I'm actually going to label this case file. Right? Uh, so you see I've renamed the image case file. We have a rec transform, which is new for Unity 4.6 GUI, or UI. And here's our image. Uh, it's a component. It takes a source image, with the, which is a sprite. I'm going to go ahead and drag the image I created on there. And you can see it actually in game. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is go up and click this little box here. It allows you to drag and resize objects. So you can see that I'm doing that here. Uh, you can see my beautiful image here. Top top notch quality. Uh, but basically this is kind of what I wanted to do. We have our case file here. Um, it's I've just centered it. You can see these blue lines that show up when you're moving around the image actually and they show you basically, basically where it's centered or uh, if you have multiple objects, it'll try to center it for you and give you some sort of idea of what you're working with. Uh, but here, you can kind of see that we have some things to work with. Um, this is not the most detailed piece of artwork, but uh, it gives us a few things to work with. I'm going to go ahead and go to the game scene. You can kind of see it here. Uh, but basically what we can do is kind of show some information here. Um, we can, Or we can generate text that basically says name. Uh, in the bio and stuff and this is we can slowly maybe fill this out as we go so maybe after you find out more information you can kind of pick and choose what goes here uh, but basically this is what the case is going to be presented we're going to go ahead and write up a small write up here that says uh, a bank robber has done something in the bank and therefore uh, uh, you know I don't know we can just we can we have like a sticky note here we can add some stuff to but basically we're going to add a button here that says continue I think uh, we might, maybe we'll do something else. I, I'm not too sure yet. Maybe you guys have some ideas. Maybe we can have like a little menu over here that basically says, like this could be our main game screen, the case file, right? So maybe we can have here like a little drop down button um, or a little button here that opens up a, a menu that has places we can go to go investigate or uh, in our inventory. I, I kind of like that idea. Maybe I'll change this classified police. We don't really need this here. Um, I just didn't know what to put there, but that, I think that's what we'll do. Uh, so what we'll do, um, we'll go ahead and start creating some buttons and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and actually add some text objects. So to do that, click on the cam case file canvas we created, go to game object UI, and I'm going to go ahead and add a text object here. You can see it down here, it says new text. Let's go in the scene view, you can actually see it some more, and I'm going to drag it to where I want it. Now, uh, this is all going to be up to you and what you want to do. Uh, but what I'm going to do is create this text file. I'm going to rename it and it's going to be suspect name. So suspect name like that. Uh, I'm going to change its text to suspect name. Like that. Uh, I'm now I'm going to actually go ahead and center the text. Or no, excuse me, I'm going to center it uh, with its width. I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, best fit here for now. And uh, basically, let's go to game view, see how that looks. It looks pretty good. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and change this background color. You see this blue color here? It's it's kind of boring, I guess, to look at all the time. So what, what we can do is go ahead and go to, I think it's render settings here. Uh, nope. Let's, let's see. Let's find it. Uh, project settings, graphics. I thought it was actually was render settings. We can add some fog. We don't need fog. Uh, let's see. I don't remember how. I don't. We can figure it out. Um, project settings, graphics, project settings. Hope maybe you guys know and you're just beating your head against the keyboard right now, saying this is how you do it. Stop. Whatever. Okay. Oh, it's on main camera. Here we go. We'll change the background color to something a little bit. I don't know. There we go. All right. I changed the background color. It's on our main camera. Should have known that. I forgot. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and add suspect age. So 
uh, in our scene view, I'm going to go ahead and click on our suspect name text object, and I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And this is going to be suspect age. And to move it, simply just drag and drop. And you can see that these little lines show you kind of like if it's centered and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to text to age, like that. Uh, I'm going to hit D again, or Control D, excuse me. There we go. And I'm going to drag that down. And this is going to be our suspect bio, which we haven't actually created in code yet, but we'll get there. So suspect bio, hit enter. Uh, let's say change age to bio. There we go. So now what we can do, um, let's see, drag it down. Um, we can actually go ahead and add a little text file here. This is kind of this would be kind of cool. Um, what we'll do is create another text object here called down here, and we're going to call this tips. Okay, and you might be wondering what we're going to do with this. Well, I think it'd be kind of fun to play with the sticky note a little bit. I don't know what to do with it too much, but what we can do is rotate it. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it like that. Again, I'm just playing around. Uh, and we're going to actually make this thing say tips. Uh, we'll say game tips. Like that. Uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe just a, just a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. So now we have this little spot for game tips. We can actually go ahead uh, and I'm going to label this game tip uh, title. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to control D again to duplicate it like that. Oh, going to go ahead and drag it down. Going to change over to the box format. It's a little easier to work with. And now what we can do is uh, game tip title. We'll just change it to game tips. Uh, and we'll say game tip goes here. And I'm actually going to do it like this. And we don't want it to wrap. Well, we don't want it to best fit. We can have it start from. We'll have it start in the center. Uh, and I guess we'll change the font size to 16. So let's say uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and paste this, this text in here to see what it kind of looks like. Okay, cool. Basically, I just want to make sure that it, it works. <laughs> so now what we can do with this, uh, we can add little game tips. So we can add little. Uh, Tips for the player, you know, like uh, the main menu is on the left-hand side. Uh, there will always be two key witnesses, that kind of little thing. Uh, you know, we can mess around with it. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a button. So you can see I made a button here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. And we're going to call this one, uh, let's say, locations. I'm going to go ahead and control D locations and I'm going to drag it over and we're going to call this one inventory or we'll call it evidence All right so now we have two buttons here uh, we're going to actually change the text on them just so we know what it's what it's supposed to say we'll change this one to evidence like that uh, and then we'll go ahead and change locations text to locations So now in game, I'm going to go ahead and press play. Uh, none of this over here, none of this stuff is updating, but we have these two buttons here, evidence and locations. So what we can do now is create little objects here that when we click this, a whole bunch of buttons show up with different locations we can go to, and then evidence, some more button or evidence buttons can show up, or a list of our inventory, basically the evidence that we have found. Um, so from there, I guess what we'll do is. Let's let's look at how to access this stuff with uh, through script. So we've we've talked about in the main menu how to kind of call functions right off of buttons, uh, but we haven't actually looked at how to access text objects. So uh, what we can do is create a case file GUI script, uh, which is well this is like what I like to do. So what we'll do is go ahead and create a new C sharp script, and we're going to call it case file script. Uh, actually, we'll just call it case file GUI. Excuse me, GUI. I'll go ahead and open that up. Model develop. I'll make sure I'm zoomed in for you all, and it looks like I am. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase these comments because we don't need them. 
Uh, we're past that now. But what we're going to do is to access the Unity GUI, you need to go ahead and add the library using system, or excuse me, using Unity Engine dot UI. And that allows you to access a whole bunch of new stuff that is added in the new Unity UI. Now we're going to go ahead and make a private variable here. It's going to be a type text object, and this is going to be actually called the suspect uh, name. Okay, we'll go ahead and do private text uh, suspect age, uh, private text suspect bio. Uh, what else we got? And then we need to do uh, sus. We need game text private text uh, in game tip. Tips. I guess we'll say tips. Now we don't have any tips yet, so we're actually going to go ahead and create a private string. Uh, I actually will go ahead and do a public uh, string. Public string. Uh, this is going to be a string array. So go ahead and put your brackets right. So we have a str public string array, and we're going to call this in game tips array. Uh, in games tip. In game tips. Uh, descriptions, I guess maybe. I guess we'll call it that. We'll go ahead and make it a new string array. And uh, what we'll do is say, I guess we'll make it a size 5 for now. I think that'd be okay. I'm going to go ahead and control this to safe. Going to jump into Unity, make sure we don't have any errors. Looks like we do. I, I figured we would. Uh, and it's because of this. We've got to get rid of those curly brackets. We don't need them. Uh, okay, so now you you might be wondering why I made that public. Well, I'm going to show you. So we're going to go ahead and drag this case file GUI onto our case file canvas, okay? And that adds this script here. And now you can go to actually see this little toggle button here that says, or this little arrow that says in-game tips descriptions. You can click that, and now you can go ahead and just write them in here. So we don't have to hard write them in the code. So you can go ahead and say, um, click locations to view all areas you can search, right? Uh, we can go ahead and say click evidence evidence to view all your acquired acquired one R that looks weird I don't think that's correct let me let me check acquired uh, I mi I missed the C up front right so there's a C here oh goodness acquired there we go uh, click evidence to view all your acquired items we'll call it uh, let's say we need to come up with, th with three more we'll go ahead and say uh, can there will always be two we use the number two key witnesses there will never be more than one this might not be true for you remember if you're gonna kinda Go off and create your own. Uh, you, like basically use this as a model, but I'm going to say there will always there will never be more than one robber. Uh, and then again, these are we can change these, and then we'll say, uh, "Good luck finding the." Uh, no, good luck. We'll say good luck solving the case. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now um, we have all those, which is perfect. Uh, and we have our ways to look at our name and stuff. What we want to do is go ahead and change suspect name, suspect age, and suspect bio. We want to change those. I, I named them like this in here so that we can kind of see them. So when you're not, when you're just kind of creating the game, working on it, you you know what this should be. Uh, and then when you play, you can remember. But what we want to do is basically, if this suspect name hasn't been found or this age hasn't been discovered, we want to make it so that it says name colon question mark question mark question mark right uh, for now you know we can definitely change that later but what we want to do to access that this this component here is we need to actually look for a child right so all the, this case file suspect name suspect age these are all called childs of the parent case file canvas right they're all game objects that are children of the parent case file canvas so what we want to do is using our uh, in our start function here, what we want to do is say suspect name, not age, excuse me, name is going to be equal to a transform 
So it's this transform, right? So this the transform we're on currently is our canvas. We want to say transform dot find child. That takes a string, uh, and the string's going to be for this one is going to be the suspect name child. So like that. Oh, make sure you spell it correctly, otherwise it'll throw an error. Uh, so it's suspect name equals transform dot find child suspect name. And then we're going to go ahead and get its component. So get component, uh, and the component is text, right? So suspect name. The, these are all components in the game object called suspect name. So it's a text component. So we'll go ahead and say text. Uh, so again, what this is doing is we're saying this text object called suspect name is going to be equal to the transform dot find the child called suspect name and get its component text. Uh, so what it's doing, it's saying, all right, this transform that we're on, case file canvas, run through all my children and look for one that's named suspect name, which it finds. And then it says, go ahead and grab the component called text, which is this, and that allows us to edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out for our age and bio and tips. So we're going to go to suspect age. It's going to be equal to transform dot find child dot get component. And then it's text like that. Now in find child, remember it takes a string and it's suspect uh, age. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. Control, I erased it. Control C to copy. Uh, and then Control V to paste, like that. Going to change suspect age to suspect bio. Uh, like that. In game tips, change that to in game tips. And uh, what do we call it in game? It's called game tips. Okay. So now that we have these objects, we can go ahead and assign what these values are. Uh, so uh, for name, we can, what we can do for now is what we're just going to say if at the start uh, we're going to go suspect name dot text. So this is the actual the, the actual string, the actual text in here. So dot text is actually getting this. We're going to set that equal to uh, a string here, which is going to be name question mark question mark question mark. Now we're going to do suspect age uh, dot text, which is going to act again. It's going to access that uh, that empty text spot or that spot that we put um, some text in. And we'll do that. Oh goodness! Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do suspect bio dot text is equal to uh, let's say age. Excuse me, bio. Like that. And then the last one is in game tips. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go in game tips dot text is going to be equal to our string array. So, in game tips descriptions. Uh, and it needs, so basically in, the, in these brackets, it needs an index value, right? So, we know our array is 0 through 5, so we could actually just say sign it 1, and that will send it whatever's in the 1 location. But we're going to go ahead and do uh, unity and or we'll do random dot range zero and then to our in game tip descriptions dot length which gives our length of the array uh, and I need a parentheses so what this does it's going to randomly choose a value between zero and however long our array is which our our array in this case is five long so it's going to go ahead and go zero to six because it count the way it counts is a little different, or excuse me, zero to five. Uh, and then what it's going to do is it's going to once it picks that, it's going to randomly choose one of those tips to put on the screen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and control us to save, and we'll go ahead and test this. Let's make sure we don't have any errors in our console, and we don't. So I'm going to go ahead and press play, and in our game scene, you're going to see some of these things change. So there you go. You see that our name is our name. And our age has changed, our bios change, and our game tips. Just click evidence to view all acquired, all your acquired items. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and press play again. You can see it change. Click locations to view all areas you can search. So we got that up and running, which is awesome. Um, now, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is add a case description here. And um, we're going to go ahead and assign that. 
just like how we were doing it up above. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, our suspect bio. Well, actually, we want to do a few things too. Uh, so in our scene view, I'm going to go ahead and grab the suspect bio. I'm going to go ahead and control D again to copy it. I'm going to drag it down here. And here, this is going to be our case description. And I'm going to change it, the text down to case description. And I'm going to make it really big. Like that, right? So our, our case description will go there. Uh, like that. Um, now, I actually want to make the bio a bit bigger because why not? So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And we can go ahead and see our bio. There you go our case description. Now if you don't want these to resize themselves, right now I have them all being best fit. Uh, you can go ahead and when you click on it just click best fit and it's going to go down to this say you want the name to be uh, size, I don't know, 22 font like that. We'll go ahead and change age to best fit. We'll change it to 22 font. We'll change our bio to 22 font as well and we'll click best fit. So now when I go ahead and press play you see our name, age, and bio. Maybe you don't want the bio to uh, start in the middle like that. Maybe you want to start at the top like that. Go ahead and press play. You know, it's all up to you what you want to do. Uh, the case description I'm going to set at 22, I guess, or 20. Uh, why that start at the top, not best fit. So like that. Uh, and now, this is something cool you guys can do uh, and think about. Uh, basically, with our name, age, bio, and stuff, and our case description here. Uh, you can choose what you want to give the player. Maybe you want to give the player the age of the person. You know, maybe that's part of maybe a brief bio. What so far what they know about them, or maybe you want this to be a discoverable asset. Right? That's all up to you. And uh, I'll probably what I'll probably do is give a little bit of information. Maybe like it's the biography about them or the age, uh, and then the case description. Uh, we might look at creating a case description. So basically. Uh, instead of the generic, you know, someone came into the bank and robbed the bank and stole this much amount of money, what we could do is kind of add a few things in there that are random. So when we generate whatever weapon the uh, robber used, we can throw that in the case description. Uh, or we can keep it a mystery. You know, it's it's all up to you and how you guys want to create the game. Uh, but basically, what we've done here today is kind of created a, a simple menu, uh, we can call it a case file where we have a locations button, an evidence button. They don't do anything yet, but we're definitely going to add some things to it. Uh, we have a generic description and stuff that we can add. We created a little tips here, which I kind of like. Uh, but it, it's starting to shape up. Uh, so hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you understand how to access this GUI. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, once you understand kind of like how uh, Unity parents things like you know, this is called a game object, and it's a parent of all these different things. You know, it has 12, and not sure, has what, like 10 children, I think it is. Uh, or 9, I guess, has 9 children in it, and you can access them by the name. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, but it, it's definitely tricky at first. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and write them down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and comment. You can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, or Facebook. I'll try to answer your guys' questions as best I can. And I'll talk to you guys next time.